Hey folks, it's Charles. I'm the inventor of the popular BioBlaster series ozone machines. So folks, we've discussed the difference between corona discharge and between UV light ozone generation. So now I'm going to tell you about the beginnings of how I started to build ozone generators. So as mentioned before, the main method, method is called corona discharge. And that is where you've got two electrified metal substrates with a dielectric media in the, in the, in the gap. And in this case, the dielectric is, is air, and you get a nice spark gap that is uh, causing that spark to jump across that dielectric media. Well, folks, this is a power plant from an old ozone generator of mine. And this is actually a machine that was made by another manufacturer. And, of course, that machine went to the grave, which is the reason I have it here to demonstrate. But in the very beginning, the very first ozone generator that I took apart in order to discover how to build a better ozone generator was called the Max Blaster. And what you're looking at is an actual Max Blaster power pack. And the way that it works is you have this thing, which they call their power pack, and then you have uh, small pieces of electrified stainless steel, or soon to be electrified stainless steel. And they're bent around a three-dimensional shape. In this case, I think they use a piece of baseboard molding to get a flattened ellipse. And their idea was that in some of the early ozone generators, what they actually did is they glued a piece of flat stainless steel to their dielectric. And the idea is that by using this ellipse shape, what they're getting is a three-dimensional electrified ozonated generating area. Now, what you're looking at here is a piece of a dielectric media that's used in the Max Blaster machine and in some early, very primitive ozone generators going back uh, to the 1800s. And this is called mica. Now, in, back in the day, mica is a, it's a stone that comes off in flakes or, or layers. And high quality mica has become very expensive and hard to find. So today, this is, what, uh, this is called uh, sheet mica. And what this mica is, is it's mica flake that is uh, mixed up and it's uh, pressed into a flat panel uh, with a resin. And so it is uh, not as good as the old high quality uh, real sheet mica. And, but anyway, this is what's in this pack. And what they did is they would stack the electrified media and then the dielectric. And then they put another layer of the electrified media and then another dielectric. And the ones that are four stackers have four of these, the five stackers have five, and they may even have a six stacker. And the problem uh, with this particular embodiment is, you know, the way that this actually worked in the machine is the fan is mounted right here. And then all of this is slid into a piece of vinyl fence post. And so the problem is that the airflow of this fan gets hogged or blocked by this transformer. And then it, it is not able to effectively blow across the electrified media. So in taking apart this machine and studying how it had been designed and built, I decided that that, that was a really bad idea. And I also, you know, having been in construction for many years, know that if you're going to build a pavilion with a roof, because there's another piece of plastic that goes on top of this. You never put your columns in the center of the areas that you're going to support. You'd obviously put them at the four corners. So in my first improved version of this ozone generator, I used the same dielectric media, mica, sheet mica, and then I turned it into what I called my ozone tunnel. And then I moved the posts to the sides so that the airflow uh, was not being blocked by the post. And so it had a lot more strength than this flimsy generator pack that they still use today. And in this case, 
what we did is we then switched from a fan to a high-powered blower. And what we would do is we would force that air directly across that electrified media. And the way that that worked in real life uh, was this. So this power pack, which had two transformers, went through our ozone tunnel and it took the air that was coming out of the blower and blew it straight through the generating media so that you were maximizing the airflow in contact with the generator cells. Now, I went away from this after about six months. So this is a, a dinosaur that we have in our little museum of ozone history. And the reason we went away with it is multifold. First of all, these transformers have an exposed stack of metal, and this metal quickly rusts in the presence of ozone. So I wanted to switch to a, a, a better generator, a better way of, of generating ozone. I wanted to switch to a standardized ozone generating cell. And so, over the years, we, we moved from, from that design to improved designs. And we used a variety of different types of dielectrics and electrified media. This is the first um, standardized ozone generator plate that we ever used. And in this particular plate, you've got ceramic. So, the problem with this sheet mica is it is very flimsy and it's in layers so you can see this laminate coming off and what happens is when the wires that are touching this develop a patina they begin to oxidize or rust and they will literally burn through this because the burn through temperature of mica is only a few hundred degrees ceramic on the other hand is the same as porcelain and this high quality porcelain ceramic has a 2,000 degree temperature rating before it can ever melt through. So on one side we have a nickel titanium which has been printed on and soldered into the card so that this can be changed easily from the ozone generator cell. And on the back side we have an electrified foil that has a ceramic coating over top. So again we have two electrified medias, one post going to one side, one post bringing electricity to the other side, and our dielectric, instead of being air, is ceramic. And these um, different, these plates have a 3,000 hour lifetime, and they work really well. Uh, in the presence of high humidity, though, the life can be cut uh, quite a bit. So, over the years, we've experimented with a, a wide variety of different types of electrified media. This is an early plate that we tested with tungsten. Now, tungsten is an amazing metal. It requires 6,000 degrees centigrade for sublimation. That's 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you put that on a 2,000 degree rated piece of ceramic, you have a high quality plate. Unfortunately, we found out that in this embodiment, it would tend to get so hot that it would cr eventually crack the ceramic after about 5,000 hours. So we discarded this, this type of a cell. And we went from that to a new type of cell. And this one is electrified basalt, which is a volcanic glass. So once again, we have the electrified metal on the back, the basalt that's electrified on the front. And this is a real workhorse. This, this plate will get you about 5,000 hours. And this is used in a variety of different types of ozone um, cells over the years. The other thing you need to talk about is the transformer. Now, this is a standardized transformer with a heat sink. And this heat sink is designed to keep it cool and to allow the temperature uh, to remain constant so that it doesn't overheat and go bad. Now, there are hundreds of companies manufacturing these types of transformers. They all look identical, but inside the guts are not all identical. And it took me many years to find a reliable manufacturer of these good, high quality transformers. And unlike the other transformers, there's no metal to oxidize or rust. These are completely encased.
They're sealed, they're bedded in silicone with the heat sink over top of them. So we use these cells for the last several years. The, the problem is after several thousand hours, even these cells, the basalt begins to oxidize away. The foil begins to oxidize on the back and eventually they'll go bad. So I've tested large cells. This is one that uses a platinum metal group. Uh, is this also went bad very quickly. I've tested larger transformers. I've tested transformers with heat sinks and without heat sinks. And today we use the very best high quality plate material on the planet. We have finally succeeded in finding a way to make a high quality tungsten plate. Now tungsten, remember, has the highest burn through rate. Now folks, I don't get these out of China. The majority of ozone transformers and generator cells come from China. This particular model does not come from China, although it is not made in the United States, but this is a 10,000 hour rated plate. And rather than using a simple foil on the back side as the dielectric, we actually have two generating cell areas utilizing this high quality tungsten and the hospital grade ceramic is the dielectric. Again, this allows you to change your, your plates from machine to machine when they go bad. In some of our other models, we use double stacked versions of these, which allow us to get a lot of ozone into a tight space. And this, is, once again, this high quality tungsten with a 10,000 hour lifetime and hospital grade ceramic is the very best that we have been able to prove over the years with tens of thousands of ozone generators on every continent in the world performing high quality, high output ozone gas generation. So folks, when I tell you about our ozone generators using the highest quality materials and the best parts, and the best products with the best designs, we have literally tested hundreds of different types of cells, different types of plates, and different types of transformers. And we finally settled on a very reliable, extremely high output, 10,000 hour rated, hospital grade ceramic with tungsten plate. And when you buy one of my BioBlaster ozone generators, you're going to get years of use out of it for yourself, your business, or your family, whichever you're buying it for. And folks, don't, you don't need to take my word for anything. Buy one of our high quality BioBlaster ozone generator products, invest in your business, invest in your family, you'll not be disappointed. Our BioBlasters use the highest quality plates and they're designed to make ozone for longer times than anyone else. I'm Charles and I thank you for watching.